We got the throttle propped wide open. And we're gonna actually insert a hose, a compression test hose in here. It's actually a valve hose. We'll put that in and then we have our gauge. Now what, what's important when we do the compression test, we're gonna look at the first beat, the first beat of the engine, we want to see, oh, maybe about 90 pounds. That's a nice engine. And the first beat of the engine put out about 90 pounds. And then we're going to watch it through eight consecutive beats and see where the pressure goes. So let's start on number one right now. Here we go. Looks like we got about Two, I'm going to say we've got about 220 on that one right now. Let's release the pressure and go to number two cylinder. Okay, here's number two. And again, we're looking for that first beat and then eight, a count of eight. There we go. We got 210 out of number two. Number three cylinder. Three. And let's look at number four. Here we go. We got about 210 on number four. Looks good. Compression check looks good. Let's go over the general rules of a compression test. When the difference in the cylinders is more than 25%, the engine has a problem. Then we'll have a lumpy, rough idle. So if you have a lumpy idle, a compression test may be needed to confirm the vitality of your engine before you go chasing your tail and go down the rabbit hole trying to tune out a lumpy idle. A new engine compression test readings are 160 to 180 psi. After break-in and carbon buildup in the chambers, normal is 180 to 200 psi. As the engine ages, becomes tired, the readings can drop to as low as 120, indicating worn piston rings. The compression test can also be low due to the cam timing. Engines with big cams and excessive overlap, street rods and drag racers have lumpy idle and low compression test. They are set up to breathe at higher PM. The issue of overlap disappears. If your Miata test is all cylinders low, double check your cam timing. Let's figure out the percentage of difference on a compression test together. So to do the math, what we do is we take the highest and subtract the lowest. So we have 160 and 120. And the subtraction there leaves us 40. We're going to take the 40 and we're going to put it over the highest, 160. So we have 40 over 160. And then we're going to see what fraction we have. Well, 40 goes into 40 one time. 40 goes into 160 four times. So that's one quarter. So one quarter is 25%. So this engine will have a lumpy idle and a rough idle. You'll be able to feel it. You'll feel it. Your senses, you'll be able to pick it up. Next, let's talk about the leak down test. Next test we're going to do is we're going to do our leak down test. And on the leak down test, we have to bring each cylinder up to top dead center on compression. And then we're going to run pressure into the cylinder. The gauge we're going to use is going to show up. We're going to put 100 pounds of pressure in the air line. And when we open it up, then we're going to see a percentage of leak down, how much of each cylinder is leaking. So we'll set that up and take a look at that next. The first step with the cylinder leak down test, and you work through each cylinder is individual. So we're going to start with number one cylinder. And the first step is going to be to bring the cylinder up to uh, top dead center, number one, on compression. So we know that the 
an intake cam is going to be pointed at 9 o'clock, and the exhaust cam is going to be pointed out at 3 o'clock. So let's use our bump start button to get it close. Here it comes. There it is. Real close right now. We're going to put in our stick. We've got a mark on it. And we're going to turn it so we can just see top dead center. Let's see. There we go. There we go. I'm going to say it's right about there. Now, if you have it a little bit off one way or another, as soon as you pressurize, put pressure on top of the piston, if it's not right on the top, if it's one way or another, then it's going to spin the engine. So let's see if we got it right. For the leak down test, we're going to put in our hose. You can see that we have 100 pounds of pressure now. And now we're just going to plug it in how much leak down we have. Remember, if we're off a little bit, it's going to spin the engine. Yeah, we were off a little bit. Got to bring it back to tap that center again. Okay, let's plug it in and see what we've got. We've got 100 pounds here on our gauge, 100 pounds coming in. And let's see how much percentage of leakage we have. Looks like our leakage right here is, it looks like it's about 5%. So we're doing pretty good. About 5% of leakage, that's good. So we'll move on to the next cylinder. Number two. Now if you were working on a V8 or something with the valve covers on it, you couldn't see, you couldn't see the the camshafts and the position of the lobes to tell you where top dead center was, you can actually bump it over and put your finger on the line here, this air line, and you can feel when it comes up, here it comes up on compression. So as soon as it starts to come up on compression, you can pull your line, put in your stick, and roll it around because we can see because the valve covers off we can see that what we're coming up to right here is again the camshafts are in the correct positions and we're looking for that top dead center here it is going down coming up going down coming back up there we go there it is right there Let's try number two. We got 5% leakage on number one. Now we'll go to number two. We got 5%. I'm going to say we got about 2% leakage on number two cylinder. Now we'll work to number three. Okay, let's try number three cylinder. And number three cylinder is, looks like we got about 5% in number three also. Now we'll move on to number four. Put in our hose. Let's take a look at number four. Whoa, look at number four. Let's see if we got something stuck here. All the valves are loose. Look at number four. We got a leakage of it looks like about, oh, it's got to be almost 15% in number four. Now, I wonder where it's coming out of. Intake? Not the intake. It's coming out of the exhaust. I got my hand over the exhaust and I can feel the pressure coming out of the exhaust, so the exhaust valve that's hung open. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to tap on those exhaust valves and see if we can get them to lock down. It might be just a little rust, a little carbon or something built up on the valve, so we'll do that next. You can hear the air escaping through the exhaust valves on number four cylinder, and that's the reason for our 15% leak down on the cylinder. What I'm going to do, I've got a brass drift here, brass drift, so I don't hurt the, uh, the last 
gas adjusters, hydraulic adjusters, and I'm going to tap on the adjusters and see if we can get that valve to close up because it may just be debris on the valve. We're just going to tap on it. So a little general persuasion on those exhaust valves on number four cylinder. We'll run that leak down test again on number four and see what we've got. Oh, that straightened it right out. Brought it right around to zero or one percent. A leak down test, like a compression test, varies on different types of engines. These tests are not to be to compare one engine to another, but rather to compare the cylinders in an engine to each other. We had a normal leakage of zero to eight percent, but big block engines might be ten to fifteen percent leakage. Warm and cold engine also makes a big difference. The compression check exposes the engine's vitality. The leak down test pinpoints abnormalities. Cylinder leakage can happen one of three ways. You can have the valves leaking, an internal combustion leak, or a crankcase leak. If you have leaking valves, like in the video, first step is to look for a tight valve or lash adjustment holding the valve open. A valve adjustment on a shim over bucket Miata may fix your problem. Our Miatas, NA 1990 through 1997, have hydraulic self-adjusting lash adjusters. So in the video, I only needed to see if the lifters were loose and I could spin them in their holders. A leaking intake valve will disturb the intake manifold pressure, cause poor idle, and even make the intake manifold pop or backfire. An exhaust valve, an exhaust valve will idle smoother and high RPM, the problem will seal, seem to disappear. The spark plugs will start to load up with carbon. An internal combustion leak, a head gasket, or head or block crack, when pressurized, will push coolant out of an open radiator cap. The leak can also come from out of a neighboring cylinder spark plug hole, and that's where the pressure and the air leak is actually transferred from cylinder to cylinder. The crankcase leak. Air leaking from the valve cover breather hose is coming from worn piston rings or if it's real bad, it indicates a broken piston. There are a couple of cautions to be taken during these tests. Remember when you hook up the line pressure, the engine can spin like in the video. If a wrench is left on the crankshaft bolt, the bolt can loosen up or even break. If you have an internal coolant combustion leak, when you pressurize a fountain of scalding hot coolant could come out of the open radiator cap. So the safety rules are safety rules remove all tools used to spot top dead center. Number two, place a wet towel over an open radiator cap during the test. Now you can create a poor man's leak down tester by removing the Schrader valve from the compression gauge hose. Then use airline pressure. Look and feel for air leaks. 